Hi, I'm Tom Gustafson, Computer Information Systems Instructor at Lake Superior College in Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome to this second video in a series on imaging a Windows 7 computer. In our first video, we asked this question, what is, a com what is computer imaging? And we saw that it's creating a complete image of a Windows installation, including the operating system, drivers, applications, and settings. We use a tool called ImageX, and we store it the image in a WIM file. This file can then be used to distribute the Windows image to multiple systems. We use two resources to do this. Uh, the first is Windows 7 Enterprise to install Windows 7, and then the Windows Automated Installation Kit, which is where we get our ImageX utility, as well as Windows PE, the bootable CD that we use to create the image and to deploy it. The steps to image a computer are to first install and prepare the Windows image, and we did that in the first video. We installed, uh, we took a fresh installation and we ran sysprep to generalize it, to shut it down, and prepare it for imaging. We need to download the Windows Automated Installation Kit. I've already done that, but I'll show you where to get it. And uh, then in this video, we'll also create a Windows PE ISO file or a CD for a boot environment. After that, we need to create an image with ImageX, then uh, partition the destination computer's drive, and distribute the image to the computer. We saw last time how to run sysprep to generalize the system, tell it to run the out-of-box experience, which is Windows Welcome at startup, and then to shut down when it's done. So we have a system that is ready to be imaged, but before we can create the image, we have something else we need to do. We need to Download and install the Windows 7 Automated Installation Kit. It's found out here at Microsoft.com slash downloads. Again, I've already downloaded and installed it, and I did show you this in the last video, but just for a very quick review, if you go out to the Download Center and just search for WAIK, there it is right there, the Windows Automated Installation Kit uh, for Windows 7. Very big file, 1.7 gigabytes. So be prepared for that. Do it on a fast internet connection. So it's very straightforward to install the automated installation kit. I won't demonstrate that for you because it is quite straightforward. Uh, the big job is just getting it downloaded. Once you've installed it, it shows up in the start menu and you have some nice utilities to use. The user site migration tool, we won't use it in this video series. Uh, the Windows PE files, we're going to use that tool and we are also uh, going to create an ISO file with this OSC DIMG program and then in a later video we will use the ImageX program. So let's take a look at the users or uh, the, the automated installation kit. Here I am on my server 2008 system. I downloaded and installed the automated installation kit on this system and I will just go to start all programs and there it is the automated installation kit. We have a few options here. One is to go to the deployment tools command prompt. Another is the Windows System Image Manager. We use that in our series of videos on unattended installations. You can watch those if you'd like. We also have a couple of other items here but we're going to be interested in this deployment tools command prompt. So I will go there right now. Okay, back to our slides. Let's take a look here. We are now ready to move on to our next step in imaging a computer, and that is to create a Windows PE boot disk. We can create the ISO file and then burn it to a CD if we wish. In our case, we won't need to burn it to a CD because we can use the ISO file from, directly from our virtual machine. So we need to go to the Deployment Tools command prompt, which I just got done doing, and then we're going to use this command right here to copy the Windows PE files um, for a certain architecture. You can do the x86 for 16-bit, AMD 64, or Intel architecture 64. Uh, that's this parameter right here. I'm, I've specified x86 in the example that I'm showing you, but you could use either one. So we need to run this copy um, PE command 
and copy all of the files needed for a Windows PE boot disk into this directory called um, winpe underscore x86. So let's jump to our virtual machine. And again, we're at the deployment tools command prompt right here. So we're ready to run the copy PE command. So let's give it a shot. The command looks like this. Copy PE.cmd. We specify the architecture, which is x86. And then we specify the destination. Where do we want these files stored? And we'll call this winpe underscore x86. That's the name of our destination folder. And these files all get copied to that destination folder. And the folder didn't exist uh, before I started. So the folder was also created, the x86 folder. And notice that now we are in the winpe underscore x86 folder. If I do a dir here, there is uh, everything that was created. Notice it's a bunch of directories, one file here. And then uh, pay particular attention here. There is an ISO directory. And I'm going to just do a DIR there of ISO. And um, notice there are a few items in there. We're going to be adding to that ISO directory. Just wanted to point that out right now. OK. Um, that created the directory that has the files necessary for creating a Windows PE boot disk. The next thing we're going to do is copy the image X program to that very directory because the image X program by default is not here and we're going to want it on our Windows PE boot disk. So we need to copy it there. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to copy and because my path has spaces in it, I'm going to put this in quotation marks. C colon program files, uh, Windows AIK tools x86 and image x.exe. This is the path to the image x.exe program. It's a Windows automated installation kit tool and it's in the x86 directory. And I want to copy it to that ISO directory that's in my winpe underscore x86 directory. Um, if you understand how paths work in the command line, because I'm in the winpe x86 directory, I can just specify the destination as ISO backslash and uh, it will copy it. I don't even need the backslash. It will copy that file to the ISO directory. And sure enough, it did. Watch what happens when I do a directory listing of ISO. Now notice that the image x.exe program is in there. So we now have this directory, winpe underscore x86, all ready to go. It has the uh, necessary files in it. And now what we need to do is create our ISO file that we can use for um, booting to Windows PE. I'm going to close this command prompt and I'm just going to open the deployment tools command prompt again because I want to start out there. And uh, oh, I should point out one other thing. It wasn't necessary in this case, but it's a good habit to get into because sometimes it is necessary when you open a command prompt window to right click it and choose run as administrator. This uh, gives me a user account control prompt, which I'll say continue. And notice in the upper left corner of the window, it tells me I'm running it as administrator. Um, if you're in an account that has administrative privileges, it's not the same as running it as administrator. Administrator has more rights and permissions and there are certain things that will not work unless you're running it as administrator. So good idea to just get in the habit of always doing that. So we have a fresh administrative uh, command prompt here, elevated command prompt, and we're at the PE tools directory. Notice that if I do a DIR right here, um, I can see uh, what's in this directory. Uh, there's my copy PE command and uh, there's my x86 directory that has some of the x86 files in it. Okay, uh, also an Intel Architecture 64 and an AMD Architecture 64 directory if I were going to work in those 
uh, hardware platforms. Okay, let's run our OSC DIMG command. Again, this command will take uh, files in a directory and write them to an ISO file. Dash N just enables long file names, and dash B specifies the location of the El Torito boot sector file. So I'm going to say it's in C colon backslash um, winp underscore x86 backslash, and the file is etfs boot.com. The next argument is the source file location, which is c colon backslash winpe underscore x86 backslash iso. So that iso file has all the source files in it. And then the next is the destination file. Where will I create the iso file, which is going to be my Windows PE boot image uh, iso file. And I'll put it in winpe underscore x x86 backslash winpe underscore x86 dot iso. So the name of the file will be winpe underscore x86 dot iso. And it's going to be on the C drive in the winpe x86 directory. I'll press enter here and it's writing the files. And notice how quickly it did the job. 17 files, 8 directories to that file. So that iso file now is a bootable image. I can burn it to a CD. I can use it directly from a virtual machine. There is software that you can use as well to mount an ISO so that your Windows machine looks at it like it's a CD. But I've now created that image. So I have this image ready to go. I've copied it, uh, image X, to my build directory. I created the ISO image with the OSC DIMG program. And I'm ready to move on to my next step to use ImageX to create a WIM image of the system, and we'll do that in our next video.